Hey guys, it's Ellen here, and guess what? It's Monday, so you know what that means? Mini Monday Madness. Yes, we are painting a mini little townhouse using the ink and wash technique. Just like I showed in one tutorial um, on Saturday, a couple days ago, you'll see, if you look back, you'll see them. We decided to do a little mini one, a little house. It'd be kind of cute, because people are really into the architecture kind of look right now. And this, if you're really struggling with watercolor, this is really simple for you, because you're just washing in a color and then just taking a pen and drawing on top. Um, if you have any questions, please leave in the comment section. Also, if you're a Patreon member, you can download the traceable, but I show you guys how to draw a house like this. It's pretty simple. Um, and if you're not on Patreon, uh, check it out. Here's the little link here. Um, yeah, I have uh, exclusive tutorials there on Thursdays, ad-free videos from my YouTube, and traceables that go with my YouTube. It's just a place people can go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much. So without further ado, let's get started on the mini house. Okay, so first I'm gonna just go over how to draw this. Um, if you're a Patreon member, like I said, you can download the traceable. Basically you have your little three inch square piece. I drew a little bit bigger than that. And we'll zoom in, <coughs> excuse me. Um, we're just basically using rectangles and squares and you know, shapes like that. So we've got this kind of rectangle for the house. You're going to go in here like a trapezoid kind of figure, like, you know, line in curve, not curve, but angled. Then you got the two rectangle roof on the door and the window shutters, just like little windows, you know, these ones will have the, the four panes. This one just have one, and then the door itself will have little panes. And then the front, I put in these little um, pots, you know. And then the side will have the fence. Go like that. Curve, curve, curve. And then we're gonna just wash in some trees in the background, and we're gonna do some details on the house. So really, that's what it looks like, you know. It's pretty straightforward. It's just triangles, rectangles, no, triangles, rectangles, like a trapezoid kind of, and rectangles, rectangle windows. I think you guys can make all that, right? And so I decided to do another one of these since this one was pretty popular that I did the other day. Um, you can find this on the YouTube also that I did on Saturday. And it was a wash of like a really quick um, landscape. So we're gonna do our mini Monday madness, kind of similar. This little house, be kind of cute. So I penciled in the little house first, and then we'll wash in the, the colors, and then we'll do the pen and ink. So for supplies, I have a three inch by three inch square, 100% cotton cold pressed paper. My paints and palettes, I go over them. Everything's always in the description box. Hit the words show more, and it should drop down. Paper, uh, I have paper towels, water jars. I'll be using my um, nib, ink nib with the ink, but like I put a, a link in the description box for an actual pen. I had one, it's not working well. They're so much easier to use in something like this. It just, you know, much better. So I drew the house in the paper. I'm just going to grab my Princeton number eight long round, and I'm just going to just wash in some quick little colors on the house. I think for the roof, I'll make a terracotta kind of color. So I have my magenta, mix it with some orange, maybe some yellow here. Actually, magenta, excuse me, I'm losing it. I'll have my yellow, <laughs> maybe a little orange and a little of this brown and some magenta, a little magenta to make the terracotta color, but mostly it's like orange and you put some brown and a little bit of red. You can always test it out on a little scrap piece of paper. I have this little scrap here, see if you like it. Like an orangey color, maybe a little more red. Red, orange, and a little brown. You know, it doesn't have to be this color. It could be gray. Actually, I think I might do a gray roof. You know, see how I changed my mind? I'm constantly, I think I'll use this for the brick. So we're going to do a gray roof. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Anyway, that's how my brain works. This is a real-time tutorial. I'm mixing up some gray, whatever gray you have. I had like this... It's kind of like a brown gray. I'm going to add a little blue to it. A little Prussian blue. And that's like a little green. 
you know, Mondays are tough. I'm a little late in my video because neighbor decided to do tree removal, which is fine, but that was very loud. So here I'm going to just wash in this light gray, well, medium gray, actually, medium gray. We'll try lighter just for the roof. I'm just going in and putting the whole color in across the roof. I changed my mind because I decided to make the roof gray. I could do another red door if I wanted to, or a green door, but I'm going to make it gray. The house color can be beige, brown. I am going to wash in a green door, I think. Let's make it different. So I have, um, I have this olive green, but I think that's not kind of what I want. So I have this olive green gouache that I like. I mix the two together sometimes. And I add a little blue to this. So I have this peacock blue, Get a little pretty green. Just make a nice pretty green. See, make a nice pretty green. That's a little bit dark. I have to wash it down with some water. Let me zoom in so you can see. I'm just gonna paint a little door, the whole thing green. Make it ever, any color you want. If you want to make it blue, black, red. I kind of want a little more Kelly kind of green, a little darker. You know? At the same time, you can take green, like I'm going to use my green gouache here. I'm going to add a little yellow to it to brighten it up even more. We can put the trees in the background. So basically, we're just going to take this green whatever green, light green you have. We're going to just make these little trees. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Just like that. Nothing special. Just putting these little trees in the background here. And then we're going to draw the fence over it once it's dry. Kind of look like cypress trees. And then we could do the little green bushes here in the front. I have them in like little pots. It could be kind of a, ooh, I can't remember the name of the bushes that I have in my yard that really are really great for trimming. Okay, so that's all drying. Um, we can work on the chimney then. So I'm gonna make just a basic red, it's yellow and the magenta. If you have a red, just use your red. And it doesn't have to be red, it could be like on this terracotta side. It's kind of like a red orange. I'm just going to put some red though. Voila. The um, shutters could be any color you want. It could be beige brown. I think the house I'm going to make like a beigey color. So I'm going to move some of this orange you see here and get more yellow. Gonna add some Van Dyke brown, a brownie yellow color, brownie yellow, <laughs> maybe a tad bit of orange. I'm gonna water this color down, and I like to always see how it's gonna look. Yeah, that's kind of what I want. We'll wash it down this a little bit more, maybe a little gray to it. Okay, so I'm gonna put that color in everywhere that isn't the shutters and the windows. If this brush is hard for you to control, just use a small brush. Um, the number four works really well. For me, the four actually works harder for me um, doing something tiny like this, just because it's pointy and long, it has a long belly. I just feel like I have, it's tighter on my hand and I don't like that, but that's just me. You know, everyone should do what works well for them. So I'm just gonna put that color in between the shutters and the window. La la la. See how cute this is? I mean, you could make a bunch of mini houses. Would look so cute, like a little gallery wall of mini houses with different colors and different bushes. Could put some topiaries on them. Just give me ideas. The little pots could be the terracotta on the bottom. So I'm gonna go back and add some orange. 
and some brown. Well, they could be gray. I'm gonna make them. Maybe I should want my terracotta. See how I think? Because it's too close to this brown. You want to kind of differentiate the two. So I will go back and I will use gray for the little pots. That's what I've decided. Yep, little pots. All this will get flushed out when um, we use the, the ink. So for the windows, if you want to get, I wouldn't even get really too crazy. I would, do you want to put in the gray for the windows itself? Like a deep dark gray. This is where you might need to be a smaller brush. If you're going to put all those little tiny window panes in there. Just like that. Put all those little tiny ones in there. And I don't really care if it's perfect or not because I'm going to go in with that little pen and ink and have a little fun with it. Now the shutters, I might make, um, I might make it red actually, the shutters. This one blew out a little bit. I think it'd be kind of fun. Let's play some color up. Colors, you know, have a little fun with the colors. Like this reddish color. Notice how my colors are not very dark. The whole point of that is because if they are dark, you're not going to see all the fun pen and ink lines. Getting water in here. And then so you've kind of just painted for no reason because, I mean, you'll still see them, but you won't see them as much. Just going to put in that. Oops, it's bleeding. That section wasn't dry. I'm choosing red. Mine look very loose and kind of, I would say not super juvenile, but kind of juvenile loose. This got a little boo boo. Just go in with the paper towel and lift that color. And I'll cook that color back in. Oh, the tree people are at it again, so you might hear noises. Okay, and then for the ground, you can go in and add like a nice little green or a gray wash because they're kind of in the street maybe a little bit. You could do either or. I might do, I will do gray for the little steps here. Just like that. And then maybe a little gray for the street. Because the townhouse wouldn't be on the grass. And then you could have some green right here on the ground. So we're just washing in some really simple color. It's bleeding into the gray. I'm not getting too crazy with it. I'm gonna add a little bit darker green here. make this a little bit darker like the grass. All the fun is in the um, the ink. But I do want to do some shadows with the, the, with the beige and the green. So I'm going to add a little brown to that beige the color I had. Put a little shadow under the roof rind here. Just a little one. Right? Maybe under the, the way the, the windows are too. And the gray roof, I'm going to add a little shadow to. Grab my gray. Just, you know, to make it interesting. I don't want it to be all one note. All right, and the door, I'll take some green and make it a little bit darker. So that's also not one note. Just on the inside panel. See that? Right here. And then for the, um, the little, little topiary kind of bushes, 
Just adding a little green in here. See, I'm just tapping it in with just like tap, 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 tap. Tap, 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 tap. You can do this also with the bushes. Kind of just tap like the color. Get it a little loose here. So it's not one note also. Just taking my brush and going da 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 Darker green, that's a little too dark. But you get what I mean. You're just kind of pushing around some darker color. Kind of just on the left side here. You see, just kind of tapping in that color. And then the windows, I want to get a little bit darker, the inside part. It's a little too dark. Just a little bit darker. I'm not going too crazy. And it is kind of difficult to paint in this kind of brush. But like I said, that's the whole point. You want a little different. And then for the brick up here, I might add a little couple of darker red, just kind of swipes of bricks. And you can do the same thing with the, the shutters. Just a darker red. All right, so then we're going to let all this dry, all this fun stuff. Actually, I might go back in here and make this a little bit darker for the pots that the bushes are in. And then go on the street and a little darker color. And this staircase, make a little bit darker gray. You could also go in and add some darker tones to the um, house, but I'm gonna leave it the way it is. Ta -da. So I'm gonna let this dry and then we're gonna start working on our ink. Okay, here comes the fun part. <laughs> you take the ink. I'm going to have my paper towel close by because it could get splotchy. I had an instance with the other one. Kind of trying like that. And you can always just play around. I lost my little scrap. With the uh, scrap, get used to pushing down on the, on the nib and doing the marks before you start so you don't wreck it. So get a little used to that. See, I push down and I'm gonna make my little curvy roof detail. I don't know if you can really see that. I'm trying to do that. There we go. So you start off doing one line with the curves and then you go in every other one. Kind of like you would do with a brick. And let me tell you, don't make it perfect. It doesn't matter. Get those little curves. You kind of figure out that it's one of those roofs. Right? I just go through all this, every other one, doing the little curves. The imperfections on this part is the best part. You hear that? Trees are getting killed. Sorry about the noise, guys. Even if I edit it, you still hear it because it's all day. So I'm just going around the edges of all the windows and the um shutters like this you see the windows and the shutters and then the doorway and then the brick see the shutters and this window here and then you can start to go into some details of this also in the house it's just fun to do. This is this whole another fun thing to do. And then we, if you lost your fence, you can just either draw it with this. Oopsie, that got a little too dark, too big. But you know what? Imperfections. You can just take that ink from there and move it over. See, I'm soaking it up on the nib and just moving it over on the little bushes. And squiggly, squiggly. Okay, so here I'm gonna my little fence. Those lines going down right over the bushes and the trees. I got a little ink blot there. Same thing here. Just taking the ink from here. Do a little round top of that fence. 
And then we're going to go ahead and go across here. Kind of reminds me of like those English houses. So that little, for me, get a little too much ink. So I'm going to try and soak it up with my paper towel. So it's a little dark. That ink gets everywhere on your hands. It takes a while to come out. <laughs> That's why I try and go like this first. All right, so then we make a little round circles on top of the fence. And then the part where the fence here, I make a little scallops again, like I did on the roof. The little scallop details. You can do anywhere you want. Crisscross details. I'm going to go into the second door, the little doorknob. I'm going to make a, like another line outside the door just for more detail. And then we can just do the little lines going across for the um, shutters. I shutter to think. <laughs> just like this. Simple lines go across. It's starting to really come alive now, right? And then I'm just going to go like this, crisscross with this window pane. See, it doesn't really matter about the gray. And then the side of the roof here, just like that. And then the bushes, just do some squiggle wiggles like I'm doing here. Squiggle, 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 wiggle, the bushes. Woohoo! Go to town. And for the house, um, you could put, if you want it like clapboard, just lines going across. If you would like, maybe it's like a stucco, like a brick. You could do little um, squares, like I'm going to do for the chimney, see little squares, and I keep brick. Yeah, for this one I might just do lines going across like it's um, a wooden house with this ink. What's fun about the ink and the nibs, as opposed to just like a micron pen, is the differentiation between the lines. The lines are not perfectly one note, um, you know, width. They have this differentiating line. I can just put some little lines in the street going like this. And there you go. Isn't that the cutest little thing? And you can put like another one in here, a little detail if you want. I don't know. I can spend days upon days making designs with uh, the ink clean this off with a wash just another cute fun wash you know Aww. isn't that fun you could do this with all kinds of stuff so if you're not great at watercolor just yet and you want to just dab into it like I said you could do it with anything so I could create a really simple quick like butterfly right wash just for an example, like a little butterfly, the little head. Boop. And you let that dry, and you go ahead and you do all the little details like we did here. Just kind of funky little curves and stuff like that in there. And you have like another nice new look. So this is a little short, sweet, um, mini Monday Madness today. Um, it's been crazy since the Valentine's Day and whatnot. I hope you guys really enjoyed this. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Um, if you're having difficulty, you know, um, seeing my supplies, like I said, you hit those words that say show more. There's like a little B under them. And um, it's to drop down and all the supplies are there. And I put a link to a pen that's better than this. You don't want to deal with this. It's too much work. <laughs> um, that you can use, I think that was really cheap. It was like under $15 and you can refill the um, ink in it and use one of those. And um, don't forget if you're a Patreon member, just download the Traceable. So um, thanks guys so much for stopping by my channel, supporting my channel. Uh, Patreon, if you go over there, that's, they have, uh, have ad-free videos that I show on YouTube and uh, I have exclusive tutorials there on Thursday. And it's a place for people to support my channel, which I appreciate so much. Um, you know, I, I appreciate all the support I get here and um, you guys are great. So take care and I'll speak to you soon. Have a great mini Monday madness.